We're back again, video number three of the ED critical care tutorial. Thanks to Jimmy Hinchy over here. Um, we have a static tutorial already for setting up A lines or central venous pressure lines, but it's not enough. Folks are still having trouble, so we're going to go to video. Hopefully, this will take any problems out of the picture. Here's the things you need you need a bag of 500 cc's of normal saline, you need a trans pack set, and you need a pressure bag. And of course, you need a patient. Open up your bag, open up your transpack set, and yeah, these little yellow caps, don't throw those away. What you're going to do first is you're going to break off this little white piece of paper that are keeping this together for packing. What I like to do is unfurl it and actually make sure all the connections are tight because sometimes during packing they come loose and then you have fluid spurting everywhere. Grab your spike. And everything from this point on should be aseptic. And you just spike your bag. Now you can see, it's about 50 cc's of air in there. If that goes into a patient under pressure, they're going to get an air embolism and potentially die. It's not good. So all that air, or at least as much as possible, has to be taken out. The way you're going to do that is you're going to grab this portion of the transpack set, you can see there's this white tab here. And when you squeeze that white tab, it actually opens up the line. When it's not squeezed, it's not open. What you're going to do is, at the same time you're squeezing that tab to open up that line, you're going to squeeze this bag to evacuate the air. You just kind of maneuver the air out of the bag and into the set itself. And now we got all but maybe a few cc's of air out there, and that's the best you can do. You can't get more than that. Take your bag, pop it into your pressure bag, like so. Now you can put this brown doohickey on, but it's not really necessary. If you inflate the bag, it'll hold in your, your IV fluid bag. So I'm just going to inflate this to 300 now. At that point, close the stock cock. Now it's locked in at 300. Right. Hang the bag now. Now, the next goal is to evacuate all the air from the line itself. So, what's going to happen is, again, we're going to squeeze this white tab, and that's going to open up the line. And now the line's under pressure, so all the IV fluid's going to flow out. And there's a bunch of stop cocks on it. When the stopcock is pointing somewhere, it means that portion of the line is off. So what we have in the situation when it comes out of the box is we got it flowing here, flowing down the line, flowing to the tab, and then flowing to this three-way stopcock that's pointing off this way, so all the fluid's going to spurt out of that hole right there. So we see fluid start moving, but then we look at the line and make sure all the air bubbles are actually out. And if there's still air bubbles, keep squirting until there's no more air bubbles. Now we want to get the air out of the rest of the line. So we're going to turn this like that. It's going to face the stopcock. That portion is now off. Now it'll let the fluid flow down to the next stopcock. So again, I'm going to squeeze the white tab and look to make sure air bubbles are out. Turn the stopcock towards the top. And now there's just a little bit of line left that has some air in it. Squeeze until it comes out there. And now there's no more air in the line. At this point, you're going to switch the caps. These caps are fenestrated. They have a hole in it. That's what let the fluid flow out. The yellow doesn't. So you're just going to take off each of these white caps and replace them with the yellows. And of course you're wearing gloves. And if you're talking, you should even be wearing a mask while doing this. All right, this line is now set up, ready to go. It can be put aside and probably kept for up to 12 hours in preparation for a patient. Now, you actually have a patient you want to do a CVP monitoring on or an A-line monitoring. You're going to take off this yellow cap at the distal tip. 
and plug it in either to the distal port of your central line, uh, which would be the brown here at Elmhurst, or you're gonna plug it into your A-line. And at that point, you could even flush the central line or the A-line, and you're good to go. That could be secured now with sutures if it's an A-line or just left for central line. But now you're actually ready to start monitoring the patient. So, what you're gonna do first is you're gonna position this um, pressure transducer on the patient um, themselves. And that's the way we do it in the emergency department. You've seen folks hanging them at the bedside with a little clip that they would then level to the patient. Our patients are moving around too much for that to work. So what we do instead is we actually will tape this to the patient's phlebostatic axis. The phlebostatic axis, we'll show you a picture in a second, um, is the mid axial line and the fourth intercostal space, which is right around the nipple line in most patients. So what we're gonna do, I'll show you on myself first. It's gonna get taped right there, mid axillary line. My nipple line's right here. So we're gonna go to the one space above that. That'll be our fourth intercostal space. And I'm gonna tape it right there. So on our patient, it's gonna get taped right there. Now, what actually has to be at that level is this stopcock port. That's what you're looking for to get taped at the fourth intercostal space mid axillary line. So I'll just put a piece of tape right there. All right, now we're ready to zero this line out. And that takes away the environmental pressure and just leaves the pressure in the patient's vein or artery. What you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the stopcock so that it faces away from this transducer right here. So you've turned this line off to the patient. You take off this cap and then there's a way to test to make sure you did it right. If you put this stopcock in the right position, fluid will still flow out of that hole like that. If you made a mistake and you went the wrong way, then you can immediately correct yourself because no fluid will come out of that port. Oh, I did it wrong. Let me fix it. Okay. And what this allows now is atmospheric pressure to go into that hole, go right down here, and this is the actual pressure transducer. It's just a strain gauge, and it's going to measure the atmospheric pressure, and the monitor knows to take that out of the equation. That's what zeroing means. So we're going to reach over to the monitor, grab one of the pressure lines, and there should be two at each of the monitors at the Elmhurst ED. We're just going to connect this, and it connects like a phone jack has that little tab just like a phone jack in there and it just goes together like that. Click. Now if you needed to take it out, it's just like the phone as well. You gotta hold down on that little piece and pop it out. If you actually look at this in real life, you'll quickly see what I'm talking about. All right, so that's connected now. This port's open to the atmosphere. We've checked it. Fluid flows out, we know it's right. Now we're gonna zero the line. Come up here to the monitor and if you can remember, which of the two is actually hooked up to the patient, you're fine, but even if you forget, if you push the wrong one, nothing will happen. It'll just keep beeping at you that you're pressing the wrong one. So then we press this one, and we get a screen that looks like this. All right. So what we're gonna do now is zero the transducer. We press the button once, and it's gonna tell us to do the three things we've already done. It's gonna say close transducer to the patient, we've done that. Adjust transducer level, we've done that. And then press the zero key again. Zero in progress, zero done. All right, now the line's zeroed out. We can go over here, turn the stopcock towards the port again, put back on our yellow cap, keep everything sterile, and now it's monitoring the patient. Now, if this was set for arterial line, and you are indeed hooked up to an arterial line, then you're set. But sometimes this will say arterial line, but you're hooked up to a CVP line. So the first thing you do is you hit this button here, it says change label. And right now it's on arterial, we're just gonna move over to CVP. And that's done now. Now it's monitoring the CVP line. But the computer's not smart enough to adjust the pressure settings. So even though we said CVP, it's still at 120 for its scale. You're not gonna see anything. CVP's around five. It's just gonna be like a microscopic little blip. So we're gonna change the scale. And for CVP, a good scale is 18. So we just hit that button there, hit main screen. And now if this was a real patient, we'd be monitoring the CVP. You should see respiratory fluctuations, and everything's grand. If it was an A-line, you do that same thing. Go back to that screen, you hit change label, arterial, change scale, 180 or 120, depending on how high your blood pressure is, and you're set. All right, and that concludes the tutorial on setting up pressure transduction. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jimmy.